check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re-sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So, hope you're well. Hope you're doing all right in all that. Let me just write down in my little pad what I'm doing here. So, what is this? This is number 731. (laughs) Wow. Let me. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth recording I've done today. And it's the last recording I'm going to do today. That's for sure. Because it's 20 past 11 in the evening. So I've done this uh, by the time I've finished the recording, uploaded, and everything that's going to be. Edited and upload is going to be one o'clock in the morning. So I will uh, then watch the end of um, Clint Eastwood's new movie, Macho, something, El Macho or something it's called. And because I've been watching it just before doing this, I'll finish, hopefully, watch the end of that and then I'll go to bed. I'm normally in bed by about 1.30 these days in the morning. Uh, the days of being up till 6 or 7 in the morning seem to have gone. I don't know why. Although, the winter months are easier for me to make recordings during the day because because <laughs> of the lovely weather we have means that there's not much activity outside not many people standing around chatting and or mowing their lawns or doing stuff like that during the day so it's just the sound of the weather the wind and the rain up against the window panes so I'll get plenty done over the next few months no doubt I do wonder though here's a question I do wonder where do all these words come from (laughs) not like it's not that I've got like a a vast vocabulary it's just you know I make a deep sleep whisper recording earlier then I did a boring object and I talked about cameras and then I did a relax and sleep hypnosis daily and still managed to come up with something different to what I normally come up with maybe similar in some ways but still different and I was like where does it come from where does my brain spurns out this just mumble jumble stuff that <laughs> seems to work. Mm. So, so I've done a 128 daily hypnosis, um, relax and sleep hypnosis daily, 128 recordings. It did start off at sleep hypnosis weekly. 
and then I changed the, the name of the podcast which is something I've never done before it's kind of a new thing and because it started to be gain a bit of popularity or people started to listen to it so I thought hmm maybe maybe change it and give a little bit of uh, dedication to it try at least to make a recording every day although there are times when I go well over a week without doing anything but so with the let me boy to sleep I'm pretty regular so I'm trying to do the same with the other podcasts as well because although some of them have the same audience the individual podcasts also have maybe their own specific audience if you know what I mean so yeah this is uh it's all good oh, I'm a bit tired though cooked myself some dinner tonight I had I had something that I used to eat a lot when I was in my 20s and it's kind of a snack but it's still a meal for me so I had toast so two slices of toast buttered four fish fingers so two fish fingers on each piece of toast and a tin of beans like a, a small half tin of beans and it was yummy it really was nice and I hadn't had that for years I nearly had beans on toast and I thought no it's not gonna it's not gonna cut the mustard that it's not gonna it's not gonna pop the pimple it's not really gonna it's not gonna reach the reach the prostate you know it's not gonna hit the hit the the spot that's what I'm trying to say it's not gonna quite um give me the the oh you know that oh feeling that I was looking for the feeling of mm, yeah I'm full up I've oh I'm almost satisfied uh orally okay that's not really the right word but you know I'm because I'm eating that's what I mean what by orally <laughs> I'll just move on let's move on it's going in the wrong direction again. Again, all girls going in the wrong direction. Now my friend came up earlier and he said, oh, it's very tidy up here. And he's, he was up here a few days ago. So I don't know what he thought was <laughs> what it was going to be like. He thought there was going to be chickens running around or something. Um, it's just, yeah. And the reason it's tidy is because I've got the space now. I mean, the room's the same size. You know, I haven't had an extension. But with the extra desks, it means everything's spread out. Everything's where it needs to be. And other than when I'm going to have something to eat, I've just moved the iPad up the table a little bit and eat although I've, I do have another table if I get the chair out I could eat at that table because there's room on there for that that's kind of why it's there so it's <sighs> I'm thinking tomorrow in the morning thinking of doing a Jason's bedtime story time when I wake up because that's the kind of podcast where I need <laughs> I need energy to do it because it's if you've listened to any of them you realize why so I'm gonna maybe try and do that every day uh, if not uh, picking a story that I can find and just maybe making one up just this is gonna be silly this is gonna be a silly story 
I might try and be a bit more professional and actually make an outline of a story before I start. And in a way, I'd quite like to do that with all of my recordings. You know, sort of have at least a tiny bit of knowledge of what it is I'm going to be saying during the recording process. But I, but I, but I, but I rarely do. Not really do, but rarely do. I'd like to a little bit not so much with this not with the let me bore you to sleep but with the hypnosis stuff I'd quite like to have an idea what I'm <laughs> what I'm going to say before I start recording for example um, if I'm going to do a relaxation session and just plan ahead of time like okay, we're going to imagine a circle and that's the stress is going to be magnetized into that circle and you know then eventually the circle is going to start to shrink and you know whatever just you know for, as an example and then i can like play with that so okay that's what i'm going to do and then go with it and see what comes out of that original idea I say original, it might not be original, but see what comes out of the idea. Because, <laughs> I mean, I've done that in the past, and sometimes I've ended up doing a completely different recording to what I planned. Completely different. So, yeah, I'd like to be a bit more organized and that is part of the reason why I've got the setup that I've got I'm trying to get more organized I, re I really am I really am trust me I'm a doctor I really am I'm really not really I don't know if you know what's going on uh, I do keep abreast of the news generally you know, sort of just, uh, I watch the BBC News every day. Sometimes a few times a day I'll cl click on it and just update to see if the, <laughs> what's happening generally. Only for like five or ten minutes at a time. I'm not sitting there for hours watching it. And that's pretty much what I'm paying the TV licence for. Because it's the only thing pretty much that I watch on telly is the news. That's it. Don't watch any any programs anymore. It's really, really unusual for me to watch television. I'll stream stuff, Netflix, stuff like that, YouTube. I'll listen to Spotify. I'll listen to uh, LBC Radio. I'll listen to Audible books. And um, but as far as watching that television I don't really do it anymore I look at the television screen because something else is on it but not television programs yeah I'm paying what 180 pound a year to be able to watch television when I'm not really even watching television it's a weird thing I don't know if you have that in your country uh, don't don't reply saying, well, I live in England. Of course I have it. I'm clearly presenting the question to people that don't live in the UK. Clearly. I mean, is it like that in America, Canada, Australia, South Africa, Denmark, uh, New Zealand, Australia, did I say it's Australia, Germany, France... So, I don't know, is it like that there? Because it's like that here. And they're really heavy handed as well. You know, they'll come in, they'll, they'll hassle, they harass people. 
harass and I'm not even exaggerating they harass people once they actually get you to open the door and then you can't get rid of them there were some bailiffs at least with bailiffs you know where you stand with these they're just they've I don't know they, they think that they're police or something it's just oh they're almost like a a mixture between a um a traffic warden and a politician it's like you know two things that are just uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean just two horrible kind of jobs <laughs> that's some of the horrible people there's lots of lovely people do that job I've no doubt I just haven't met any I'm just <laughs> he's having a go at, at, at lollipop ladies now no I didn't say lollipop ladies I said traffic wardens but we need traffic wardens yeah I, I know we actually do you're right and the thing is, I'm the first to, you know, when it comes, ah, oh, when it comes to people parking in the wrong places and that, I'm the stiffler, stiffler, I'm stiff, stiffer, I'm a stickler for that. I say, you know, even though it's not really got anything to do with me. I mean, last night I went out um, to get something, so I had to go out, and it's raining. And I kind of purposely waited till it was raining because I thought, well, it means I haven't got to have a wash. I'm going to go out, I'm going to be drenched. All they're going to smell, they're just going to just smell the rain. They're not going to smell my underpants through my clothes. So that's too much information. But I couldn't believe how many cars were speeding in the rain like really driving probably in a 30 mile zone doing a good 50 60 miles an hour oh, what is wrong with them but then I don't understand what it's like to be a driver because I don't drive and I am aware having been a passenger many times in my life that it doesn't feel like you're going fast when you're in the car, does it? Unless you're very low down. You can be going 20 miles an hour and it feels like you're in a, a sports car. And some people do have MGs and they do think of them as sports cars. And they're very low to the ground. And it feels like you're going fast. A bit like when you're on a moped. You're only going like 4 miles an hour and it feels like you're going 100 like you're breaking a g-force record or something but when you're in like a normal average sized big kind of normal car that has four doors or five doors including the boot 60 miles an hour isn't fast it doesn't feel fast does it when you're in the car and is that bubble mentality where everything like the rest of the world is almost like you're looking through a screen it's a television and you're just watching and you're not part of it to me that's sort of what it feels like as a passenger and I don't like being a passenger in a car just I just don't it doesn't didn't used to care and I think part of that is when I was a kid I was a passenger and my dad he was a really good driver I mean he's had a few crashes but other than that <laughs> that sounds weird but he has had a couple of really bad crashes but neither of them were his fault um, I know everyone says that and it's like well yeah and prisons are full of innocent people yeah, fair enough, you know, try and find a criminal to actually admit to their crimes, that's, uh, 
That's like trying to find a... I don't know, I can't think of a, of a, a decent uh, analogy for it. I don't know, there must be one. I suppose there's more chance of me catching VD, is that what I was going to say, but, you know, it's not, it's not nice. So, I, my dad, he had two crashes. I'll tell you about them, just briefly, because it's amazing that he's still here. Because in his, I don't know where I was. I imagine I was living in Newcastle at the time. But when he was in his... I don't know. I, I'm a bit confused what it was. But anyway, he he had a crash. He was basically, he was on, he was in London. He was behind a lorry, but he was in a mini. Um, technically, you could say, well, it's a bit stupid to drive behind a big lorry in a mini because a lorry cannot see you. But I don't think that was known back then. You know, we're talking the 70s. Um, there's there was a lot of ignorance back then about things like that. You know, it was just, they didn't... I mean, they'd only just... Dis <laughs> I think they'd only just discovered germs in the 70s, you know. <laughs> we, I laugh, but it's not... We haven't, we haven't known about germs for long. It's only been about 70 years or something, or 80 years that we've known about germs. 90 years maybe. Is it honestly? It's that I think we, we were flying planes before we even knew what germs were. I'm making it up, I've got no idea. But there was a time when we had hospitals with surgeons and they didn't know about germs. They didn't know about um, the need for hand washing or anything like that. So it's not that long ago. Not, not even joking. Go online, check it out. Try Google. It's a good place to find stuff. I did a little bit of research back in, you know... I don't know, March 2020, when hand washing was all the rage. I looked into the the history of hand washing and soap and all that stuff, and came across some really interesting stuff. But I talked about it then, so I'm not going to talk about it now. You're going to have to go back, go back to those podcasts and find it. <laughs> I think I didn't even, I'm not sure if I even had titles for my podcast back then. I think it might have just been like numbered. But of course I title everything now. Slowly progressing. I'm slowly progressing. Anyway, anyway, so my dad was in a mini behind a lorry. And I think that lorry stopped. My dad stopped. And then the, a lorry behind him didn't stop so he got crushed between two lorries and you think of the injuries that possible and he had them he you know broken everything I think broken neck I think broken back legs arm you know he's really really bad and he they said he's you know I think they said to my nan because my, my nan told me this she said they didn't think he was going to survive then, after a few weeks, because he was in hospital for a long time, they said, he's never going to walk. He'll never, he'll never walk again. But he did. And he'll never work again. He never will be able to do anything. He won't be able to, like, he had to learn to do everything. You know, relearn to do everything. And 
I think that shows the strength of him the determination because you know I'll be honest I don't know how I would fare with having to go through that uh, not the accident but having to go through the process of relearning I, I just I just give me the wheelchair I'm very lazy honestly I just I don't know if I'd want to put myself through that so and then in 19 about 1989 maybe 1990 that kind of time he it was a really really foggy day he was parked again behind another car waiting to turn left into a road or motorway or whatever so he had nowhere to go he was and then a, a lorry hit him so the lorry because it was so foggy the lorry couldn't see his car he had his lights on and everything but it, it was like one of the foggiest it's just hugely foggy day and so he ended up injured again whiplash he had bat whiplash but whiplash for someone that's had previously had a broken neck is not normal whiplash that's um it triggers it can trigger more stuff going on injured his knees and stuff and he's yeah he was a bit weird though <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why i should say this but the accident was in the newspaper the second one I'm sure the first one was as well but the second one so I, I've, I go around my dad's house to see him and he's wearing his collar and I'm like oh okay hi and he's smiling and I'm thinking well, why are you smiling why are you wearing the collar and he points at, he has he had this uh board with clippings on and he pointed to a clipping and it was out of the paper and it showed his car crushed like heart that one side of the car completely crushed and the back so the only bit that wasn't crushed was the bit that he was in so had there been passengers either in the back or in the passenger seat on the in the front um chance of them of getting out would have been possibly zero and he he got out he was injured but nothing serious and I can't believe looking at that car completely you know it was just what so luckily the I don't know how but the the lorry managed, well, it happened to swing round. So it obviously it must have stopped and it swung round and hit the other side of the car. The <laughs> and I started this conversation, I was talking about how safe I felt when I was it when he was driving. Well he is a safe driver. He's a really good driver. And he's been driving for a long time. And I never felt safer than when I was with him driving. Maybe because he's my dad. You know, there's maybe there's that. That might just be the only reason. But I've travelled long distances with him. Uh, when I was a kid we used to travel all around. Um we used to go to Wales on holiday and we'd always be going like going to London to see people or whatever go to different parts of the country at times and you know never really any issues I mean there's once my, my brother was in the drive he was in the passenger seat of the van because my dad was an electrician so he had a van and in them, in them days, we're talking early 80s, uh, there was no laws for dry, you know, seatbelts. And 
and a car pulled out in front of my dad's van so my dad had to stop and my dad my brother eventually my dad put his arm out his left arm out to stop my brother going through the windscreen or bashing his head or anything he just stopped and he's got arms like tree trunks and just like just put his arm out in front and stopped him so he must have known he didn't have his seatbelt on or he just just automatically that was his automatic reaction because you know it's weird the last 30 years he wouldn't he wouldn't even start the engine until everybody who's in his car has got their seatbelt on he refuses he will not you know, so he's like, have you got your seatbelt on yet? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Because he had sensors. They got, you've got sensors now, haven't you? Like, beep, 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 beep. Put the seatbelt on, you knobhead. Beep, 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 beep. You still haven't put it on. Put it on. Beep, beep, beep. Another, <laughs> here's another thing. The only thing really that ever happened, car-wise, was my dad built, this trailer that was going to carry all of our camping equipment as we when we went to Wales and I don't know if we actually managed to get to Wales before this happened but on the journey quite a long way into the journey after having been on the motorways most of the time we turn into this country road and the trailer disintegrates I mean completely just falls apart the wheels are going everywhere um, literally you could see them <laughs> sort of disappear they just kept rolling and it, it was a heavy heavy trailer as well it was full of stuff so it almost tipped the car over as well but he managed to stop the car and because uh, we were in the country we were just surrounded by fields and there was no you know we kind of had a soft stop because there was like mud and fields and stuff and and then we were just stranded had that happened on the motorway I might not be here to tell you about it and some would say well I wish you weren't here to talk about it because it's boring and we didn't want to hear which is a bit harsh to be honest I mean what about all <laughs> what about all the other wonderful recordings I've done <laughs> but that was weird because we were stranded and we ended up yet yeah, there was a, a farm, like a, a farmhouse, like a working farm, but with all these sheds and stuff. And my dad wandered off. And he, he actually, the first place he called on, had welded equipment that would help him fix the trailer. And it's just like, wow. What's the chances of that happening? What's your chances? The thing is, it happened so quick. It happened too quick to be scared because I didn't know what was happening. It was just very bumpy. A little bit of screaming and suddenly we came to a stop. No other cars involved. No one else around. I mean, those wheels just going off in all directions. It would have caused an absolute catastrophe on the motorway because it was busy busy motorways most motorways generally are aren't they but this was the summer when people were you know loads of people with their caravans and all off on holiday or coming back from holiday or maybe just taking the caravan home because they just purchased it I don't know whatever reason people travel with caravans It would have been awful. 
awful. Another weird near a near miss. Well, a weird one. We were actually in Wales. I think we were just still travelling on the way to the campsite. And there was these two people in a car. The car was swerving. And they were fighting. This man and a woman screaming and physically fighting each other. Neither of them were looking where they were going or had their hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> it was like, whoa. I don't know what happened to them. Honestly, I'm so, I, I don't know if they ended up in a ditch somewhere, but it was like, what on earth? She was actually, he, she was attacking him, I think, while he was driving. So he was trying to hold her off. So he wasn't, yeah, if that's my memory. I think. It's a bit of a distorted memory. Yeah, I don't like things. I don't... For me, it's a bit like ski lifts. Being in the passenger seat of someone driving is very much kind of like being on a ski lift. Going over a canyon which is like thousands of meters deep going over trees and all you hear is the creaking echo of the ski lift that's probably 200 years old and hasn't been maintained probably ever slowly making its way up the mountain or down the mountain whichever way you're going and the relief of setting foot on the ground again after that experience. That's what I feel like a little bit once I get out of a taxi. Once I've had a taxi journey and I get my feet back on the ground, I'm like, oh, I'm so grateful. Just to, you know, it's weird. But they do it for a living. Taxi drivers, they do it for, they should be great drivers. Yeah. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Black cab drivers in London. I know you get black you get black dr cab drivers all over the place now. By black cab drivers, I mean the black cabs themselves. The in England, you might not know. You might just think I'm talking about um, <laughs> the colour of skin, but I'm not. I'm talking about the actual uh, in England. We have, it's a tradition of these these big, they're quite big cars, a, a specific shape, and they're black, but they're not always black now. Some of them are yellow, some of them are different colours, a lot of them have adverts on now. And they seem to have a different... Um, it's almost like they've read a different rule book to everyone else on the road you know they can stop wherever they want they can do whatever they want but the law doesn't say that they can do that but if you're waiting for a taxi and you're hailing one down you kind of do want it just to stop where you are not pull up 200 yards to it's the safest space you just want it to stop so you can get in so it's in one side wanting people to, to abide by the law but then on the other side I want people to just to do what I want when I want in whatever way suits me so I'm not sure if that makes me a law abiding citizen or just an arsehole I don't, I don't know one of those maybe both <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've um, I'm a little bit behind on both the website updating the website and also updo updating the podcasts with images and also sharing onto Facebook and Twitter. It's weird, there's so much to do. I know, like, oh, poor you. 
so much to do. Why don't you do? Well, there is. I mean, I'm not moaning. I'm just just saying that I'm a little bit behind on some of this stuff that needs to be done. I mean, technically, it doesn't need to be done. You don't have to do it. But then I don't have to do anything. No one does, not really. Hmm. So, anyone interested in the statistics? Anyone? Come on, come on. You know you want to hear about it. Okay, today, so far, uh, it's uh, there's still an hour and a half left till the st- till the stats stop being added up. You know, calculated. So far, I've got 16,002 downloads. So, it's actually been probably like on a, as far as being a normal day, it's been the most successful day I've ever had as on as my podcasts go. Uh, I've had 15,000. I might have had 17,000 before or so, but it's it's definitely up there. It's one of the most popular, not popular, one of the most successful podcasting days I've ever had. Maybe not the, but one of these, one of the ones. Because as, as I said that, I remembered that I have had 17,000 before. In fact, I don't know when, now I want to find out. Um, last month, did I have a 17,000? No, it's too many to go through. I can't bother. I can almost hear the relief around the world. <sighs> Does that mean he's going to stop talking about the stats? No. <laughs> no. got a message. Let me read you a message that I got. Let me read you a message. A message, you little sausages. Come on, let me read you a message. Eop. Um, I've had a couple of messages, in fact. I had one this morning. I'm pretty sure I did. Yes, I did. And this is a, a message was left as a review for number 725 let me bore you to sleep on my website my sleeping partner is the headline stalker alert stalker alert <laughs> um, just gets better and better the best sleep hypnosis for getting off to sleep uh, plus uh, oh yeah, is uh, let me bore you to sleep is so entertaining so entertaining and helps me to settle down and relax thank you for your help well thank you Gwyneth thank you very much for that I do appreciate it I should reply Uh, I do appreciate that I've also got another message today this was a couple of hours back from Andy but this is just a a message via the website but not shared. But I'm going to share it with you. Um, Mr. Newland. First, may I thank you for helping me to quit smoking after nearly 42 years. Now, I'm not sure if that was sarcasm in the sense of you saying that it's taken him 42 years of listening to me in order for me to help him stop. Thank you. After 42 years of listening to your silly voice telling me to stop smoking, finally I have. Because that wouldn't be the biggest. <laughs> I know he's not. He's saying he's being nice. Thank you. I'm just, just joking. I wish I could thank you financially, but I am a full time carer for my disabled wife and really do not have any disposable income. Um, it's fine. I don't. I do this to help, honestly. I'm not after people's money. I do ask for help sometimes, you know, to pay podcast fees and 
stuff like that um, and some people do help but I'm not this is a free service and uh, any any if anybody does send me a PayPal gift they're not paying for what I do because this what I do is free and as far as I'm concerned it's always going to be free unless I decide to charge <laughs> no, unless unless um, well there's no unless it'll either be free or it won't exist that's you know uh, I will uh, if, if things changed in a way that meant I wasn't able to afford to pay for the website or the uh, podcast hosting and stuff I would ask for help but if I didn't get help because sometimes I don't sometimes I ask and nothing happens other times I do so it, it varies um, and I appreciate everyone that does help and sometimes people that have helped can't help they can't help every time I mean, this money's not exactly flowing is it in the world at the moment well it is it's still the same amount of money as there always was but um, a lot of uh, a fewer a few people have a lot of it apparently um, what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say is what about all the money you saved from not smoking no I'm not saying that some people I feel is probably thinking that but it doesn't matter it's you know in all fairness you can smoke pretty cheap if you're smoking cigarettes then the buying cigarettes in boxes costing you I don't know 12 pound for 20 for 13 14 pound for 20 whatever it is now and you're smoking 20 a day how on earth can anyone afford to do that really um, but tobacco is fairly cheap and you can get it cheap as well tobacco is what is it 16 pound for 30 grams you can if you know where to go you can get it you can get 50 grams for like 10 quid or 15 quid or you know there's there's always places you can get it so I, w I don't know anybody who sells cheap tobacco because I'm a law abiding citizen um I, I was hoping you could I'm really pleased thank you um, Frank I'm glad that you um, Andy you was able to make use of my stuff um, I was hoping that you could direct me to a 10 minute very blunt and to the point session to help me to stop grinding my teeth and to help with my anxiety as I try to go to sleep and my mind wakes me up with vibrations through my body Okay, I understand. I actually can relate to that because I used to have that. It's it's an anxiety thing. It's it's almost um, you used to feel like you know a motorboat or a you know like an engine that you pull a cord to get it started. It used to feel to me like that was what was happening. I know it sounds weird. But it felt like suddenly my adrenaline had been kick-started. Um, or like a moped or a, a motorbike, you know, suddenly sparked. And I could feel the vibrations in my body. And very weird. It took me a while to move away from that. And I think that's part of the reason why I continue to make relaxation recordings because I benefited so much from learning to relax and I had such an awful time with anxiety and stress I was ill, really, really ill for quite a long time 
I lost, I've lost um, three different jobs through it uh, over the years. Um, through anxiety and stress, depression. The, I think some of it because it was mixed depression, the bipolar, that clearly didn't help. Um, so I don't know what it feels like to be someone else. What I mean by that is I don't know what it feels like. It's so easy to say, I know what you feel like. I know what you're going through. You don't. No one knows what another person's going through. But we say it because people when say people say that it's because they care. It's because they want the other person to know that they're not alone. And that you can relate to what they're going through doesn't mean we know what they're what it's like for them because everything's different for everyone it's going to be different there's a different experience even this similarity of the the vibrations in the body i would have experienced it differently to the way andy's experiencing it i'm not saying worse or better but like there is there's no better or worse involved it's just different is a horrible it can be a horrible experience it can be a weird experience you know so it's almost like there's there's movement but you look at the person and they're completely still I mean there was times when I thought if I got onset Parkinson's or mo multiple sclerosis or something like that because of the, the body tremors but then it couldn't be seen from outside. It was almost like internal. Very, very unusual. Um, when I hear or read other people's stories and how maybe I'm helping a little bit, that, that motivates me more than oh I got 16,000 downloads today that makes you know that's more a motivation a motivator than than um, hoping that if I'm getting 16,000 downloads that I've helped some people along the way that's my hope that's what motivates me about getting the numbers but actually hearing a story hearing reading the words of someone that's saying what I've done has been useful that means more really because that's why I'm doing it um, I don't know how useful the let me bore you to sleep recordings are for stress or for even sleeping I'm not sure I know that most of the people that contact me to tell me that they like what I do very often refer to the Let Me Bore You To Sleep podcasts. Even though technically it's just me talking a bunch of rubbish for an hour. You know, so I guess it's it's different things for different people, and I'm probably I'm never gonna appreciate what it's like for someone else to listen to me because I wouldn't want to listen to me. I have listened to myself a few times. It, you know, I have to occasionally just to say, well, I'm going to listen to see if it's what it's like. And when I, I've listened to my relaxation sessions, I do find them relaxing. It's weird because it's my voice. But it's not hugely weird because I'm used to hearing my voice. Firstly, out loud when I'm making recording and then when I'm editing
and I sound exactly the same to me when I talk out loud as I do on a recording. Now most people wouldn't feel that way, they listen to the voice and like, well that's not me, I don't sound like that. But after I don't know, blimey, a decade and a half of listening to myself, I've, I think my ears have just adjusted. That's all it is. It's not that um, there's anything magical going on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But my ears have adjusted to hear my voice. Um, it's a bit like, you know, singers on stage when they do concerts, they have headphones so they can hear their own voices so that they can sing in tune. And part of that is because there's so much else going on, isn't it? There's the music, there's the other singers, there's the crowd. It's, you know, it's a very loud environment. But even singers in a recording studio would very likely have headphones on so they can hear what they sound like. I know what I sound like. Uh, I don't wear headphones when I make these recordings. Well, I could. I've got headphones there. I could have them on. But it's just a bit uncomfortable. It's a little bit... A little bit restrictive. You know? But... Not, not that much. But I just... I don't need them. Because I know exactly what I sound like. I sound exactly the same when I play it back on the recording it's a bit louder on the recording it's a bit clearer um, the background sounds that I can hear now often don't show up on the recording because the microphone is built, it's a condenser I think it's a condenser so it really only generally picks up the sounds that are in front of it Which means um, it will pick up other, you know, loud sounds. Of course, that will any microphone will pick up very, very loud sounds, whether they're outside or not. You know, you'll get a little bit of reg register of it. But generally, when I'm talking, the microphone focuses just on my voice, and which is the whole point of, that's why I got it. I don't know where I'm going with that, I am just want to show off about the microphone. It's the best microphone I've ever had. And in the future, I will get a better microphone. I will, I will improve what I've got. I might get another one of these for future podcasts when I do podcasts with other people. Or I might get another one of these to use during the streaming. So I have the microphone for the streaming. So I'll have this microphone like one side of my face and the other microphone the other side. Um, so one for the streaming and one for the podcast. But that seems a little bit overkill. It seems a lot of, uh, a lot of flapping around. Um, Andy says, okay, about the recording, I don't know if I did a recording for Grinding Teeth, um, I would suggest that, I mean it's called Bruxism isn't it, or Bruxism or Bruxism, B-R-U-X-I-S-M. I think is the, is the name of it, Grinding Teeth. I'm not sure if I've done a recording on that. I probably have, but I think it's one of those recordings that got lost along the way. But I did a, rec I did a whole course on, um, what 
Let me see what I did. Um, learn driving test. Yeah, driving test nerves. I did a, a course on that years ago, and that got lost. Um, and he says, I believe it's called restless leg syndrome, as I really do not want to use prescription meds. And the 10 minute stop smoking session is exactly how I need to be told. Thank you in advance. Um, he says, thank you in advance. And please feel free to use my endorsements any way you need as I tried to at least 10 different hypnotherapists online and yours is amazing that's from Andy thank you Andy it's very kind of you um, restless leg syndrome if you go to my website let me see if it's on my website have a restless leg syndrome recording and it's not a short one it's a, I think it's a quite a long one and it's in I think it's on the chronic pain relief podcast um, Why is that not on my website then? That's weird. Let me just check. Because that doesn't sound right. I'm not... Ah. Right. Let me just go. Ooh. Let me just... Um, go down the page. Chronic pain, chronic pain. Jason's stress. Let me boys sleep, do sleep, relax. Jason's exa example collection title. Blimey, I need to really do this. That's terrible. That's very wrong. Ah, got no chronic pain podcast. Yeah, that's a bit weird. It's weird. Um, let me have a look if it's under my podcasts. Okay. Let me deep sleep, relax, sleep, hypnosis. Okay. Apple podcasts. Blimey. Um. I'm trying to think, where is it? I mean, it's on the podcast. Damn it. Uh, um, restless rests. Restless leg syndrome. Restless leg Jason Newland. Sometimes I can't spell my name right. I put in Jaden. Don't mean to. Okay. Um oh, that's not coming up. 
thought it would come up. Restless leg. Ceiling fan. Maybe it will come up now. No, it's not. strange then it's got to be on here somewhere surely why hmm. unless I've got this set to a recent okay search tools anytime I don't know what to say to you. Um, it's on. If you look up chronic pain, <sighs> chronic pain relief podcast, Jason Newland. And on that podcast is, if you go down, it's one of the early ones on the podcast. Rest this leg. What, let me give me a little while and I'll try and figure out if I can find the link. Oh, excuse me. Podcast. This is not coming up. It's like I don't exist. I don't understand. Okay. Oh. Perhaps I'll spell my name right, it might come up properly. Straight away. I'll, I'll put in Hooland, H E W, not N. <laughs> okay, that's why. That's why. Now, as soon as I put in a proper name, instantly it comes up. Um, so it depends where you're looking for it. I'd go to the Apple Hypnosis for, uh, for Restless Leg Syndrome number one. It's 59 minutes long. What I'll do, I'll copy the address and I will reply. So I posted that link. Um, or if you have a different podcast that you use I don't know like uh, Google or Spreaker or uh, uh, Spotify you know so many different ones then if you just Google uh, Restless Leg Syndrome Jason Newland and maybe the podcast that you that you use and it should come up okay I hope that's useful but I've sent you a link Andy to the Apple podcast where it's stationed where it's stationed where it is uh, but it's not a short one it's 59 minutes long um, right well, that's it uh, thank you for listening oh, I think I'm gonna once I've edited this and uploaded it I might just go to bed Honestly, oh man, I'm a bit tired. A little bit tired. But I could also do with a nice chocolate bar. <laughs> Isn't that strange? So thank you for listening. Remember, I will be back tomorrow. Again, with more stuff. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Do something nice for yourself today. Lots of love. Bye.
Thank you.